we are now going to look at the geometry and isomers of coordination complexes. The geometry is related to the coordination number. And coordination number, even coordination numbers are more common than odd. So we're just going to be looking at coordination numbers of two, four, and six. Uh, so coordination number two, just like in Vesper theory of our molecules, the ligands are going to be on opposite sides of the molecule. They're going to be as far apart as possible. This will create a linear molecule. And we don't have any possible isomers on this. For coordination number two, the most common geometry that we're going to get is a tetrahedral geometry. Uh, less commonly, we're going to get a square planar, and that's we get that primarily when we have a, a D8 um, structure. It means uh, eight electrons on the D level of the metal. For the tetrahedral, we only have one possible isomer. If we have four unique ligands, we get an optical isomer pair. And um, we'll look at that one in a little bit. Uh, for a square planar, we're going to have uh, two possible types of isomers, uh, cis and trans. And typically, if we have cis, we have trans also. For coordination number six, we have an octahedral structure. So we have six uh, ligands, but we end up forming a eight-sided polyhedron. Uh, so that's where the term octahedral comes from. And when we have a set of two ligands, a matching set of two, they can be adjacent to each other, cis, or opposite each other, trans. When we have a set of three, they could be all in one face, that's a flock, or they could be all in one line, a meridian, that's a mer. And then if we have three cis pairs, we're going to go through all this in our, my sketches. Uh, if we have three cis pairs, um, and that will include some odd pairs also, uh, we have an optical pair. Um, and these are also called chiral when we have an optical pair. And uh, we'll talk about optical pairs in a little bit. We have another way that we can get an optical pair. We have um, a three of one ligand and then three unique ligands. So this would be uh, similar to our four unique ligands up on tetrahedral. And those, if those three identical ligands are all on one face, then the other three are on another face. And so BCD ligands, they could be either clockwise or counterclockwise. So these types of Isomers are all stereoisomers. Uh, they have all the same bonds, but the bonds are different in space. Um, these um, cis trans and Fock mer are diastereomers, and they're easy to see. The optical isomers are called enantiomers, and they take a little bit more work to see. So looking at some of these, um, a um, dibromo, dichloro, platinum, platinum uh, compound, it's a D8, so we expect a um, square planar. So there's eight electrons in the D level of platinum. So for a square planar, the chlorines can be adjacent to each other. That's a cis. And when they are, the bromines are adjacent to each other, also cis. Or the chlorines can opposite trans, and when they are, the bromine are also opposite trans. So this is a, a coordination number four, so we're taking another one, coordination number four, with iron as a D5. So we expect a tetrahedral. And um, so the chlorines are adjacent to each other, but in a tetrahedral, any two pair are always adjacent to each other. And uh, this one here, I switched to the ligands, but 
we can also just rotate this 120 degrees, you know, taking the axis through the top marine 120 degrees clockwise, and it comes out to be this. So there's no difference between this. This is a simple rotation between them. So here's another tetrahedral uh, complex. So we have four unique ligands on this one. And um, did I draw this right? No, I didn't. Um, and when we have four unique ligands, it's a tetrahedral. See this uh, when you go into organic chemistries, um, how we get our optical isomers in organic chemistry, when we have four unique ligands on carbon. So four unique ligands on a tetrahedral structure. Um, and uh, what I did is I switched uh, two of these. If we switch two of these on a tetrahedral, we will always get the optical pair. The other way that we do it is that we do a mirror plane. And uh, everything, of course, has a mirror image. But if we cannot superimpose a mirror image, then it's an optical isomer. But that's not where the term optical comes from. It's not because we use a mirror image here. It's because um, a, the two isomers will rotate plane polarized light in different directions. So if we have a uh, light reflecting off of a flat surface, like a sheet of glass or um, surface of a lake, uh, the water that reflects comes out plain polarized light. That's why polarized sunglasses can help us to unlock that light so we can see through the surface of the lake and help us to see the fish in there. Uh, so that's plain polarized light. Uh, as it goes through one of these solutions, it'll rotate clockwise, and the other solution will rotate counterclockwise. So, and that's based on a spiral motion as it passes through. And that's what, what the optical isomers or chiral compounds are based on, is a spiral built right into the molecule. So if we have a tetrahedral with four unique ligands, we're gonna have an optical pair, and they're always a pair. So Optical isomers always come in pairs of two. So looking at octahedral, I, I know that these can be challenging. Um, I made up my own tool to help me with this. Uh, so the um, I had this file. I will post it that we can use it, and you can transfer it to a thicker cardstock. You cut it out. You fold it out all the lines. And then it took me a lot of playing around with these to convince myself of certain types of um, isomers that we have. Uh, some are easy. The cis trans and the Bachmer are easy. The optical isomers are the harder ones. Um, so uh, on the first one here, so we have a copper with four waters and two ammonias. The two ammonia, so we got a pair of two. We have a pair of two, we can think of a cis trans. So the two ammonias can be adjacent to each, to each other, that's a cis, or they can be opposite each other, that's a trans. And the way that this is drawn, so I'm taking a, the, a plane right through it, so we got four in the plane, so I'm putting that in the tilted box here. And that means that there's a, a one above and one below that plane also. So that's my representation here. Uh, so that water is adjacent to all four of the ligands in that plane. The only thing it's trans to is the opposite side. And with a set of four, then we don't talk uh, cis or trans when we have a set of four. Uh, so with um, this uh, particular combination for one ligand to another, uh, we only have two isomers, that cis and trans isomer. And uh, I don't have a picture of this one, so let me uh, use my models here. So I'm uh, double dutying on these uh, models. So for this one, we have three of one and then three unique ones. So three unique ones I'm using colored dots. Are this one? It's not travel, right? So the red is up on top for both of these. And I have a green and a blue. And on this one, the green is on the right side. This one, the green's on the blue side. Uh, green's on the left side. 
And uh, there's no way I can rotate one to make it match the other. So that makes that these optical isomers. The other side of this would all be one uh, particular ligand at A and ligand. So uh, this is one way that we can have an optical isomer with the octahedral complex. The other way I'm doing with the pink tape here, and I don't know if I can show this properly. Um, so one difference here. So if I have a, a, the pink tape on the left, the light will be better. Uh, pink tape on the left, then on the left one, the other pink tape's up on top on the right. But uh, on the right one, the pink tape's on the bottom. So um, we have two ways that we can put these pairs together, cis pairs. Uh, and um, they are mirror images of each other. And it might take a bit of playing around with models like this before you can really see them clearly. Uh, it took me a, a bit of work with these models. I made these models because it's hard to see images as I did drawings. So I made the physical models so I can really see them clear, clearly. Let's look at some more. Okay, so up here we have copper with three ammonias and three water. So we have three of each. So if, there are, if the three identical ligands are all forming a triangle on one face of this, then it's a phonic. And the phonic is short for face. The other way is if they're all in a straight line. So in the top and the two sides, we have a straight line through the molecule, a line along the one edge. So we form a line between two points and another line straight on to the other shoe. So that's called a mer, and short for meridian. Um, so the three ammonias form a straight line. The three waters are forming another straight line that's uh, perpendicular to that one. So let's uh, do a variation. So we have a, so there's only two isomers on this. You can play around with it, but we can't make any additional isomers with this. So in this one, we got uh, three ammonias, two waters, and an iodine. So we can put the three ammonias onto one face. So we have a face with that. Um, and the other three are all going to be another face. So they're all going to be adjacent to each other. So there's no possibility of trans for the water in this case. So we have a, a box with the ammonia. Uh, everything else is automatically cis. So here we put the ammonia on a plane. So they're in a line on the plane, so that's meridian. So on the meridian, now that the waters can be either adjacent, they're, this top is adjacent to all on the plane, this bottom is adjacent to all on the plane. So the water is adjacent to the water. So we have a meridian for the uh, ammonia, a mer for the ammonia, and a cyst for the water. Uh, keeping the ammonia on the meridian, now the water is opposite each other. So we have meridian for the ammonia and trans for the water. So we have three isomers for this particular compound. And um, here's another one. Um, I'm not going to get too complicated with my tests on these. Uh, I, had, uh, I saw one compound that was uh, offered up one time and it had 30 isomers. So I'm not going to go with anything that big, obviously, or hopefully. So here's another one. Got um, two ammonias, two waters, and, uh, I, and two iodines. So for the first one, I have uh, everything trans, the iodine trans, the ammonia trans, the water trans. So everything's trans. And on the next three, one of them is trans and the other two are cis. So we have a, 
the water trans, the ammonia cysts, the iodine cysts. So, of course, that means we can have each of the three different ligands to be trans. So that gives us a three right there. And it's not possible to have two trans and one cis. Um, but we can have two cis and one trans. And then last one that we can do is have everything cis. So the water cis to water, the ammonia cis to ammonia, iodine cis to iodine. And when we have... Um, three cis pairs, we're going to have optical isomer. And one of the ways that we check optical isomer is we do the mirror image and we see if we can superimpose it. And of course, it's hard to really play with it in your mind to superimpose a drawing. And that's where the physical ones uh, are of use to play with. So this one gives us a total of six isomers here. And um, I was going to do a, another one I didn't draw out on this. So if we had a, um, uh, instead of uh, two iodine, we had an iodine and bromine, uh, it would also work. So the iodine and bromine would be opposite, the opposite iodine and bromine would be um, adjacent. Um, Jason and the trans. Ah, iodine uh, bromine will make our uh, cis trans pairs here also. Except if we have an iodine bromine, we actually double up our pairs. We get another pair, two more isomers. Because right now the iodine is opposite to the ammonia, but if we have iodine bromine, then we could do iodine opposite ammonia, we could also do bromine opposite ammonia. So that would be an odd pair having the iodine bromine there, and iodine bromine, the odd pairs might make additional isomers for us also. But we still would have our optical isomer, the iodine bromine would actually have two pairs of optical isomers. So this one is a um, now, a tricky one, we have three bidente ligands, the ethylene diamines. And uh, if we see all three, if we see all the ligands being the same, we think, oh, there can't be any isomers. But the ethylene diamine is always a cis pair. So it can only take adjacent positions on the, um, the structure. So it's always a cis pair. So we have three cis pairs, and it does form an optical isomer. So, um, you know, take a little playing around with the, the tapes on this to convince yourself that we cannot superimpose these two uh, images. So we have three cis pairs, so that's the, a pair of optical isomers. It's a chiral uh, molecule. Um, oh, here's the odd pairs. I didn't? Ah, yes. So um, uh, here, replacing uh, one of the ethylene diamines with a um, nitrite, nitroso ligand. Uh, so we add on another type of um, isomer we can get. We have our three cis pairs when the nitrate is adjacent to itself. We have three cis pairs, so we have an uh, optical pair here. But the nitrate can also be opposite, trans to itself. So we add on an extra um, isomer. So we have three isomers on this one. We only have two of them here. And here's showing the odd pair. Uh, and it's a little different from up here. So this odd pair, again, it could be trans, it could be adjacent, and but we have three cis pairs, so we get the optical isomer with it. Uh, but the opposite of in the cis position is the opposite of iodine is going to be ethylene diamine regardless. So up here, the yeah, opposite of the iodine can replace the opposite either ammonia or water if we have an iodine bromine instead of an iodine pair. Uh, so up here, because the opposite positions can be different, we actually add on two more uh, isomers if we have um, iodine bromine instead of two iodines. Down here we have, um, we'll have the same number of pairs if we have two iodines or we have an iodine bromine. So we have you know, essentially two iodines here, we have three pairs 
three isomers, iodine and bromine, you still have the optical pair with the odd, odd set, but you still have only three isomers. So this is a, a challenging one to get, figuring out the number of isomers. Uh, I will post um, this little model that we can use if you uh, want to help yourself to see how these go together on the octahedral. I don't have a model for the tetrahedral. Hmm. Think about that. Um, but this is a pretty good set of, of um, compounds here. I'm not going to make it too complex. Um, I should uh, hopefully be within this type of range when I ask questions on a test. 